Rurouni Kenshin Trust and Betrayal is a beloved OVA of the Kenshin franchise, and for good reason. For those who have seen the series, it provides an origin story to how Himura came to the place he is in the show. It has this darker and grittier tone, serving as a nice contrast to the more light-hearted nature of the 1996 series. And the action in the film is excellently done because it doesn't have to rely on a television budget. One of the major aspects I find particularly interesting about Trust and Betrayal is a bit blatant, but is also pertinent to so many different parts of the OVA and worth making note of. This aspect I'm referring to is the title, Trust and Betrayal. How these two concepts really drive the story home and make it so engaging. The core idea being that each character ends up betraying the trust they had initially earned, and because of this, the end result is a tragic one. This is exemplified through many different characters, the most notable being who I believe to be the main antagonist of the film, Izuka. He initially works for the Choshu clan, taking care of bodies after another member kills someone. While he's by no means the most noble character, the Choshu clan trusts him to get the job done and remain loyal. Similarly, Kenshin puts his trust in Izuka when, at the end of OVA 3, he is told that Tomoe is the one who betrayed the clan. Tomoe! Izuka-san! Tomoe! What he states is partially true, but is mostly conditional. Izuka is only informing Kenshin of this so he can later be disposed of. By the end of the OVA, Izuka is revealed to be the real traitor, a Yami Nobu spy. He does this without any sense of ignorance in what he's doing. He's fully aware that he's being foolish, but ultimately is not too concerned because, if he succeeds, he'll be rich. This scheme that he sets up ultimately fails, and as he tries to make his escape, he's killed by Shishio. This proves that by betraying the trust Izuka had initially earned, he was only setting himself up for an inevitable, tragic end. Tomoe actually betrays the trust of two different people. She betrays Kiyosato by falling in love with the man who took his life. Though this betrayal actually is presumably well taken by Kiyosato, as there's a scene in the final OVA where Kiyosato's deceased spirit stares at Tomoe. He smiles and leaves her with a flower as a reminder of him, not so coincidentally the same flower Kiyosato had left Kenshin before dying. I interpret this as a passing on of the torch, so to speak, as well as foreshadowing of what's to come. Similarly, she betrays the trust of Kenshin. While initially she went into this relationship with plans of taking revenge on Kenshin for killing Kiyosato, she eventually falls in love with him. And with this newfound love, the two build a sense of trust between each other. This relationship actually takes them to many different places, with even Kogoro supporting their relationship and wanting Kenshin to leave with her as a married couple in order to avoid possible danger. By leading Kenshin to this trap, she ends up losing her own life instead. Much like Kiyosato, Kenshin is very forgiving and understanding of Tomoe's betrayal rather than holding a grudge, but the tragedy is still present all the same. Now, Enishi, I'd argue, betrays the trust of Tomoe. Tomoe left to take revenge, but does so with the expectation that Enishi stays behind and takes care of their father. By following her there, he's being rather irresponsible. Furthermore, the fact that he ends up plotting with someone like Tatsumi only showcases how impressionable he is. Therefore, Enishi is probably not, in retrospect, the best person to trust with taking care of his father. But even worse than that is what Enishi's attitude causes, and that is the loss of Tomoe, his own personal tragedy. Tomoe was practically a parent to him, since she raised Enishi in place of their deceased mother, so this would be a major loss, and through this irresponsible betrayal of her trust, he pretty much falls into madness after Tomoe's death. Finally, with Kenshin, he actually betrays his own trust. At the start of the OVA, he vows to himself that he would only kill as a means to save others. But by the end of the OVA, not only has he taken more lives than he has saved, but he's also taken the life of someone that he had vowed to protect. The loss of Tomoe is both the betrayal of Kenshin's own trust as well as the tragedy. 
The outcome of this is now Kenshin's forced to actually think about the actions he's made. Before, it's crossed his mind, sure, but he always came back and enmeshed himself in bloodshed. By killing Tomoe, he's put himself in a situation where now he can't stand by those same ideals that he was standing by for most of the OVA. This is the catalyst that eventually gives us the Kenshin in the TV series, the one that vows to never kill again. So I said earlier that the trust and betrayal of each character leads to calamity, but what does Rurouni Kenshin actually say about this? Well, the meaning I got out of this OVA was to value redemption. Each of these characters face loss in some way by the end, but only half of who I mentioned don't die. Second chances aren't easy to come by, so when faced with tragedy, something has to change. If you made it out alive, then it should be viewed as a catalyst for self-improvement. Now it's up to both Enishi and Kenshin to make the right decisions to ensure a better future for both themselves, as well as the people around them. Even when faced with the same misfortune, how individuals choose to react to this can differ, and by having both Enishi and Kenshin face the same loss, it exemplifies this quite well. Similarly, this can be applied to our own real-life experiences, and to value the second chances we get as individuals. Not necessarily in high-stakes situations, but also in terms of relationships with other people and opportunities. Like Kenshin, we aren't perfect, but we can still see when we've committed wrongdoings, and make an opportunity to redeem ourselves after facing adversities. Don't be like Izuka, one who knows they're acting witless, but chooses to do so anyway. Value that chance for redemption, rather than squander it.